Why is anyone surprised when dictators act true to form and behave as the lawbreakers they always were? It's in the nature of the communists to flout international agreements and only the naive assume that communists, dictators will behave properly. When it comes to dealing with communists and fascists, too many politicians have shown an extraordinary degree of naivete. When Neville Chamberlain came back from Berchtesgaden in the 30s, having discussed Hitler's plans to take the Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia, he told his sisters that when Hitler gave his word, he could be relied on. And then when Chamberlain announced that he was going to go to Munich to the House of Commons, there was a standing ovation. Only Churchill and a handful of realists declined to stand. And even after Dunkirk, it took five days for Churchill to persuade the war cabinet that there was no point in trying to deal with Hitler and trying to rely on his word again. In 1942, despite his numerical superiority in forces, the British general, Arthur Percival, went against Churchill's instructions and decided to surrender to the smaller Japanese force on the very naive assumption that the Japanese would treat the troops better and that he would be humane with the people of Singapore. He also destined the Australian 8th Division to a terrible number of years of PO war imprisonment under dreadful conditions by the Japanese. In 2000, Bill Clinton naively backed Beijing's ambitions to join the World Trade Organization under the naive belief that they would follow the rules and that they would eventually democratize and become good international citizens. Of course, the opposite happened and the Americans paid a lot. The West paid a lot for allowing Beijing to join the WTO, breach its rules constantly and also steal or otherwise take the intellectual property of the West, particularly the United States. There's been a similar naive belief among Australian politicians that uh, entering into a free trade agreement with Beijing would be in our interests. In fact, politicians have a blind belief in the virtue of free trade agreements they seem to always work one way, principally against Australia. Apart from enriching the local Beijing lobby, entering into the free trade agreement with China, increasing our dependency, turning our dependency into a, the greatest dependency of any Western country on Beijing was a serious error. It was putting all our eggs into one basket, a, a very dangerous basket indeed. And one of the serious errors of our politicians was to treat Chinese corporations, Beijing's corporations, as no different from, say, Korean corporations, or no different from Belgian or Dutch corporations. Corporations incorporated in China are very different. In the ultimate analysis, they are under, under the direct control and supervision of the Communist Party. They are at the directions of the Communist Party and will always act in the interests of China as decreed by the party. 
We're in a situation now where any indication of disobedience will be punished, and that is being shown in relation to the way the Beijing communists are dealing with us in relation to trade. But not only do politicians turn a blind eye to the nature, the fundamental nature of the Beijing communist regime, Twitter, Twitter has allowed the regime to use its platform to defame Australia and to defame the West. Once again, Twitter has demonstrated that it's more allied with the left than with democratic countries. It suppressed a report in the New York Post which demonstrated that Hunter Biden's emails with various people indicated that the Biden family was a major business, a very lucrative business in selling off access and influence in Washington to foreign oligarchs and in particular the Chinese Communist Party. Recently this naivete of our politicians came to a head in the, their mismanagement of allegations of crimes committed by Australian soldiers. They undertook a major investigation. They stockpiled all those allegations of crime instead of leaving them to the chain of command to deal with through courts martial, if appropriate. They stockpiled them. They put them into this unwieldy grab bag of allegations to be handled by an inquiry which went on for four years. And they then, when they got the report, foolishly decided to publish it without in any way ensuring against uh, breaches of the presumption of innocence and indeed even allowing uh, collective punishment of our soldiers. By publishing the Brereton Report, even with the names hidden, meant that everybody Everybody in this case was assumed to be guilty. And the reactions have been predictable. The Australian people have been outraged, not only by the way in which the presumption of innocence has been disregarded, but especially in relation to the imposition of collective punishment against all those who served in given units, including those who died under the flag. The reaction of the communists was predictable, and the government should have known it would be predictable. Handing out a report like that, sending it around the world, would only do damage to the reputation of Australia. And of course, the communists decided to take advantage of this, and they took advantage by that outrageous post on Twitter, and Twitter left that there, unlike the way in which they remove things, for example, the allegations concerning Hunter Biden and the Biden family in the New York Post. The communists will only laugh at our out outrage. And this was all predictable. The government should have known this was going to happen. We're caught in the situation because of the naivete of those who should be providing foresight and leadership. The politicians, the politicians of Australia should rely more on the common sense of the Australian people who would never have allowed this to happen. Australians, it's time to take back your own country. Mm -hmm.